Today we are at the Chickasaw Bricktown Ballpark and joining me is Jeff Jackson who is the head groundskeeper and today we're going to learn a little bit about what it means to be a groundskeeper. Jeff, thank you so much for having us down here today. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, so you are a Horticulture OSU alum, right? <laughs> yes, and I you, am. You found yourself in an amazing office to work in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, what it means to maintain the grounds. I mean, we're in the middle of baseball season, so you're pretty busy, right? Yeah. About Halfway through the season so far, we've played uh, 36 AAA baseball games, uh, about 20 high school baseball games, and a couple other uh, special events that we've had on the field. Um, it's been a it's been a crazy uh, crazy weather pattern. It seems seems like it was kind of cool and rainy all up until the, about the, the last two weeks, month or so, and the, the heat's kicked on pretty good. Well, so. I just know how it is to maintain a garden. I can't imagine having that many eyes looking at my work. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about so baseball season goes from March to October, correct? Yeah. So how do you get it green in March? <laughs> uh, so uh, this is a full Bermuda grass field. We actually start in. Uh, Late December, early January, uh, we actually have uh, we've actually uh, tried a little bit of a new new system here, uh, whereas you might see uh, ryegrass overseed or things like that. Right. I've actually uh, found it more beneficial to the Bermuda grass health to go full Bermuda grass. So I actually use uh, turf pigments, uh, turf colorants, turf paints that have recently been uh, released. Really helps the grass um, absorb a lot of heat. Uh, as you know, green uh, absorbs a lot more than a, than a white dormant Bermuda grass would be. And I also have a full field of uh, turf grass growth blankets. Okay. Uh, those are permeable blankets um, that kind of act as like a greenhouse effect uh, that can heat the soil temperature up at a good five to 10 degrees uh, more than it, than it would just naturally out on a, uh, a non-covered Okay. Uh, surface. So you sort of camouflage it until it starts doing yeah. its own thing. And you mentioned Bermuda grass. What uh, type of Bermuda grasses are you dealing with here? They're not just your regular yeah. common grass. Yeah, right? so we've got some of the latest uh, hybrid Bermuda grasses on the infield and foul territory. We have the newest Oklahoma State Tahoma 31 Bermuda grass. On the outfield, uh, we have a Tiff Tough uh, hybrid Bermuda grass. Um, it was uh, at the Tifton, Georgia. And I know those need a lot more maintenance. Of course, you're giving that out daily here yeah. uh, using a real mower. Tell us a little bit about what is that daily maintenance look like for this Bermuda grass? Uh, so we're uh, mowing uh, daily, basically. We mow uh, with a walk behind real mower on the infield uh, and foul territory, just because those are a lot more high traffic. We don't want uh, like our big uh, riding fairway mower. We don't want that kind of the traffic on the infield or foul territory. So we're usually walk mowing okay. uh, those. And we also collect the clippings on those areas. The outfield, uh, we're also mowing daily. Uh, that's with our uh, Toro 3575 fairway mower. Mm -hmm. uh, it mows the outfield. We kind of have it a specific pattern. Uh, we have the stripes where the ball tries not to snake. So if you have a bunch of crisscrosses with a real mower and rollers on the back, the ball might snake. So we try to have it out to all. What does that mean, the ball might snake? <laughs> so if, if you're an outfielder or you're an infielder, uh -huh. uh, if it crosses um, the stripes intersect, uh -huh. the ball might move this way oh. or this way. So you want the ball to play as true to the outfielder or the infielder as possible. Okay, so it helps the ball player kind of predict where the ball is going to yes. be rolling. Where it might roll or where even you might position a player. You might position them on a certain dark stripe or a light stripe. Okay, I never realized that, and it makes sense, the way the grass is laying can actually actually influence the yeah. ball movement. Yeah. So obviously it's not just grass. You're also dealing with um, some different dirt or textures areas. Yeah. Tell me about those. Yes. Yeah, so first I'll talk about the what's underneath the actual grass is yeah. a little different than what might a homeowner okay. might see. So we actually have, um, it's a basically a USGA style uh, putting green under this entire surface. So we have an 18 inch collector drain that goes all around the entire field. We have 15, uh, four inch lateral lines that go across the field every 15 foot. Above that, uh, we have four inches of pea gravel, and then we have 10 inches of 92A engineered USGA sand blended with 8% peat moss. Uh, then you would have your sod on the top. We have that under the grass just because we uh, are playing so many games, you need the field to drain. If we're dumping the tarps or something like that, you need the field uh, to drain and be safe for the players. Uh, usually within 30 to 45 minutes after we dump the tarp. So the water needs to percolate and move down through the soil. 
So I would imagine you're irrigating a lot and that also helps with that drainage as well. Yes, so uh, we actually have a water reclamation system that all the drains tie into from the field. So we're actually reclaiming that water and pumping it and using it back out on the, through the irrigation surface. So okay. we're watering uh, more deeply and infrequently just to try to get our, our roots to dry for that water and things like that. You don't want them shallow uh, where you're just kind of feeding the shallow roots. You need the roots to drive down through the sand and things like that. Okay, all right, very good. And so going back to like the warning track and the pitcher's mound and all of that yeah. stuff, let's talk a little bit about some of that uh, yeah. aggregate. Yeah, so uh, the infield uh, dirt portion uh, is made up of an engineered infield mix called Dirt Edge Professional Infield Mix. It's actually mined out of uh, Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, and is engineered and blended uh, with the right amount of silt, uh, the right amount of sand, uh, coarse sand, fine sand, medium sand. Uh, we have a six inch column of that infield mix on the infield surface. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the more professional infield mixes that you can have uh, these days. Um, it really helps with water retention, but also water shedding. And then we have calcine clay and expanded shell uh, manufactured by DuraEdge as well. Uh, those are kind of top dressings, kind of helps for sliding, water retention. If we have any rain gains or things like that, the calcine clay can absorb water okay. a lot quicker. But and I know you're quick to clean. cover it, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, the dirt uh, portion of the, of the field is probably the most critical. That's where the game is played the most. Mm -hmm. If the dirt portion of the infield was to get too wet or unplayable or unsafe for the players, we'd have to postpone the game or potentially cancel the game. And that loses a lot of revenue for the ballpark. Uh, we play 150 games throughout the year, so it's hard uh, with the team schedules, you know, to try to uh, reschedule. reschedule games and things like that. Plus all of our paying fans here, it's hard, you know, it might be your only time to come out to the ballpark. So we're very cautious and very critical about keeping the, the, the infield dirt playable okay. uh, for all of our games. And so how do you, how do you manage that, those dirt areas? Do you have to top dress that additionally or? Yeah, so uh, hot days like this, we're using more of the expanded shale uh, that holds the water. Uh, we're actually usually putting standing water after the games or on d hot days like this and the, it'll just absorb and it actually makes the dirt play a lot better. Okay. It would almost turn into concrete if we didn't water it and things like that. You know, uh, you don't want uh, hard hit balls taking hops or hitting players that could yeah. chip a tooth or things like that. You know, you got a prize prospect or shortstop here. You don't want them chipping a tooth where you might be out. Sliding's a big issue. You know, you're sliding into second base or third base. You don't want anyone hurting or tearing up a knee or things like that. So. Uh, it's real critical just to try to keep it uh, on that on that fine line of, you know, it's it's wet enough that uh, it performs the way we need it to, but not too wet where where it can pull. That's really fascinating. Is there is there a certain moisture? Or is it more just experience and a, a um, field test that there, you know? There is uh, moisture meters uh, that you can use. Um, a lot of a lot of it just goes from experience and mm -hmm. what you're kind of see sometimes if you have a moisture meter you're trying to get to a certain number and then that's the the number that you'd like to play off of okay. um it just kind of varies you know in oklahoma it can be really windy uh and sunny or it can be sunny and humid so you just kind of gotta or you know it might be cloudy a, a different day so you can't put as much water on it so you just, it's very fine line that you know you're not looking at just the next day, but you're looking at days ahead and things like right. that. Right, so you're always watching the weather for yeah. us. With so much work that goes into this, I know you know you as a horticulture major obviously love this, but why does somebody put all this effort versus just synthetic? You know, coming from Oklahoma State, you know, developing all the Bermuda grasses and things like that, it's really fun to get to experience and showcase those as well here. Also just for safety of players, you know, it's extremely hot here in Oklahoma during the summer months with players taking batting practice, uh, or practice like during the heat of the day, you know, the four to five o'clock just before the games, it could be very detrimental to players' health and player safety as if we were playing for a synthetic surface. Down Absolutely, here. and it's nice and cushiony actually. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine that helps them when they're running or sliding. That maybe it gives a little bit more to. Yeah. So um, you know, some standardization of other sports, you might have a G Max test where the softness or a shear test where actually the where you can see the grass give way or things like that, where a synthetic surface, it might not be as forgiving and things like that. So it is very critical to have uh, that softness and that ability for the, for the grass to give way um, for players, you know, joints or, or ligaments or things like that, or bones or just playing on a, a soft surface is, is key. 
Well, Jeff, you're doing, you and your team are doing an excellent job. And me and I know thousands of other appreciate the work that you're doing on a daily, weekly basis out here. Um, thank you so much for the influence that horticulture has on the game. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.